Welcome back to CNBC Reports. Here again is Dennis Neal. That was me first in the Gimme Gimme's doing their version of Sweet Caroline. I love that. Punk meets Neil Diamond. All right, here's some real deal action for you a little bit more. I want to talk to you tonight about the doomsayers. Now, we bring a lot of them on CNBC, guys who made their reputations by forecasting doom and turning out to be right. Meredith Whitney is one of the best-known doomsayers. She called the Citigroup collapse and the banking crisis way before the rest of Wall Street did. Noriel Rabini. He's an even bleaker doomsayer. He called the meltdown back in September 06, a full year before the market peaked and began its horrible slide. And there was a money manager guy on CBC earlier today, Dan Deegan of Deegan Financial Advisors, and he sees as much as a 50% decline in stock prices from where they were in the fall, and he recommends buying absolutely nothing in the stock market right now. But it's important for investors, for CNBC viewers, to remember that most everyone who goes on air is there to talk their book, to sell you something. If they see even worse times ahead for the economy, chances are they're trying to sell you instruments that fare well in that kind of a downturn. It's one reason why Bill Gross and Mohammed El Arian of PIMCO are down on stocks. They sell a lot of bonds. And one other thing, Wall Street is a male-dominated preserve, and men love to play Can You Top This? So the doomsayers try to outdo each other on whose forecast is the most dire. It's just what they do. Now, these doomsayers, they made their props by preaching doom and being right about it. And when that's how you made your rep, you're going to be one of the last to reverse course and decide we're going to be okay. And yet, we are going to be okay. And I'm not selling anything. Okay, tonight I am taking aim at one of those perma bear type players now. He's a forecasting Eeyore. Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital in 2007 he came out with his very prescient book, Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. He was right to preach doom then, and he's still preaching it now. And by the way, he has stuff to sell you that can protect you, right, Peter? I mean, you like overseas stocks and safe harbors like gold, which goes up in value as people become more scared about the economy. Well, they, yes, they go up in value, but not because they're listening to me. Those things are going to happen anyway. Yeah. Gold's going to go up, you know, whether or not I come on television and talk about it. And if someone buys gold through your firm, do you make money on it? Well, I mean, they, anybody that does something through my firm, I make money. Do you ask these questions about all the perma bulls that are on your network day after day? They're constantly trying to sell stuff, too, stocks? aren't they? You're totally right. They're trying to sell stuff, too. Yeah, I'm a stockbroker. I can sell stocks just like all those other guys. The difference is I am not perma bear or perma bull. I understand reality. You know, when you guys first started calling me Dr. Doom on Squawk Box, I said, look, it's not doom. It's reality that I'm talking about. And the reality is we're still in a lot of trouble. And when I wrote that book, Crash Proof, not only did I predict what would happen, but I predict ex predicted exactly what the government would do to try to solve the problem in the name of stimulus. And it's the stimulus that make, that's making things worse. The economy is not going to recover until we stop digging ourselves into a deeper economic hole, Peter, which is precisely what we're doing. Now, how is stimulus making things worse when so far the feds have managed to spend less than a dime on the dollar of that puppy? No, you remember, we are in trouble now because we've already overdosed on government stimulus. We don't want interest rates to be zero. We need interest rates to be much higher. We don't want government to spend more. We want government to spend less. We don't want government bailing out companies that are not viable. They need to fail. I'm with you, know, you on that. In, in the short run, remember, whenever you get a government stimulus, the short-term effect, you know, you get a little boost. You get these green shoots. But the economic soil has been poisoned by the stimulus. Those green shoots are going to wither and die. Right, but you know, Peter, you don't really think that interest rates should be higher in an economy that is actually contracting in its no, growth, do you? No, absolutely, because we have a shortage of savings and we have too much debt. And the thing is, the government has kept interest rates too low for too long. We have to let them go up. But we American have to savings rates are up now, right? American savings rates have suddenly ballooned to, what, 6 or 7% or something. But, but government spending is more than offsetting that increase, so our net national savings is not expanding we needed to expand we you know you know it sh if we take our medicine we'll have an immediate decline that's sharper than we, the one we have now but i can assure you because of what the government's doing we're probably going to have an official unemployment rate of better than 15 percent by the end of obama's first term As now if we did the right policies. thing we would be long on the way to recovery by right. then when's the last time peter just one last question when's the last time you were bullish overall 
Well, I've been bullish on a lot of things for the last 10 years, and I've been right. You know, I've been bullish on foreign economies. I've been bullish, bullish on China. We've invested a lot of All money right. there for the last 10 years. I've been bullish on commodities. Okay. I've been bullish on, on precious metals. But I, I was bearish on the stock market in the late 1990s, and I was right. And when I saw the government inflating a real estate bubble as early as 2002 and 2003, I began predicting exactly what would happen when the bubble yep, burst. you did. And I can't I, – look, it's not my fault All that right. I was able to see these problems far enough in advance. Okay. Okay. to gotta, not only warn people about it, but to do something about okay. it. Okay, got to wrap here. And when you make a major turn and decide that the end of the world is not near, come on my show and let's break hey, some news, Ben. Hey, I'm not bearish on the whole world. I got you. I'm bearish on America and only okay. because of what we're doing. And I'm bullish on America. Well, All right, <laughs> thanks a lot for being with us. I appreciate it very much. All right. Okay, and...